This topic may have some relatives divided. A man wrote into Dear Prudence saying his wife's family love arguing and they become very excited and loud no matter what the topic. <laughs> so he says he's asked her family to just tone it down in the past, but it doesn't work. He doesn't like being screamed at, he says, and so he's resorted to keeping his distance from them. But now he fears he's just being, they know he's being avoidant. Capri, what advice would you give here? I mean, why are you looking at me like I know something about a loud family? <laughs> I mean, and they call me Big Mouth Little Bladder for a reason. Uh, I got many nicknames. I'm, I'm exposing them all today on the social. Well, as you can imagine, with a name like Capri Silvestri Caffaro, we, we have a lot of very passionate Italians in my family. And let me tell you something. Um, we ju we're not yet. The thing is, this dude, does he not realize they're probably not yelling at him? That's just the natural level of their voice. Yes. And so my, my, I have this issue. So my partner is British. He's British. And he's also half Italian, but he's British. And that is, and so he thinks, so my sister and I talk that we're screaming at all times. But we're not screaming. That's just how we are in our natural habitat. And so I think that it's a little bit of give and take here. And, you know, to me, his family is very reserved. It's like, I feel like, oh my gosh, I am too loud standing next to you. But, you know, it, I think it's important for your partner, your spouse to get in, to, you know, get along with your family. But I think it's really about who are you closest to? Who does that, who does your partner interact with the most? Now, if they see your parents once a year, like in my situation, then it's not as important. But my sisters are involved in my life. You don't live in the same town, but we're super close. So if you're gonna be like, oh my God, like, you know, your sister needs to tone it down, then Ooh. it's like, you better come through me. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and guess what? Like, you need to, I ain't toning down. Um, so guess what? So how do you guys manage? Can I ask how well, you guys so, you know, I mean, I think for the most part, it's a bit of give and take. And I think that there are certain times where he just kind of like removes himself and we know that and that's fine. That it's like, if we're going back and forth and you know, we're loud, he's just like, I'm just gonna go hang out with my bros over here and you guys do you. Yeah. Um, and so look, long-term relationships do take a little bit of compromise. Families are important, um, and we don't all come from the same background. And I think that there's a bit of, you know, yeah. you have to ex respect people come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different perspectives, and they're raised differently. But haven't you ever been, like, when you're dating and your dating life and you've gone over to meet the family, and you're like, this is just weird. Yeah. Like, there's something, I, like, I'm not talking about- I feel like that, that, that has to happen to me. I'm, it's like, I'm surprised that I haven't scared everybody away. <laughs> no, but it's not about like being loud or whatever. It's just a weird energy. And it's probably that it's not necessarily be weird. It just might be very opposite to your family. So the question is like, could you be in a long-term relationship with a weird family? I don't think I could. When you say weird, you mean they communicate I just remember, I, listen, I remember just going over to boyfriend's houses and sometimes just being like the energy at the dinner table. And again, maybe I'm used to also an Italian and loud family, everyone's talking, so it was complete silence, yeah. for example. It felt it's wrong. foreign, foreign. It depends I, yeah. on like whether yeah. or not, like how strong your bond exactly. and attraction is to that person. Like a lot of times the person isn't representative of their family and vice versa. We are not our families. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, so I understand. In a perfect world, we get along with everyone, we compromise, we try our best. There are some situations where that's not possible. And the reason I say this is because there are some situations where you can't get along with the family mm -hmm. or you can only maintain a very surface, yeah. very almost artificial, fakey fake. We'll see you at the big, big, big events. Yeah. Handshake, handshake. Yes, talk once a year, maybe talk once every five years. And that's okay. Yeah, right. You know, I think that there is a pressure, some sort of fairy tale fantasy pressure out there that dictates that when you become families and you merge families, everybody has to be one happy family. And what, what was that movie, The Brady, whatever, and everybody <laughs> has to be all together. And I don't think that's realistic. And it sets up unrealistic expectations mm. and it sets up judgment because the person who says, no, I'm actually not that close to my in-laws, suddenly there's something wrong with me? No, mm. it's just not everybody is gonna need to Keep be it best real, friends. Mm -hmm. Everybody, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.